So I studied uh, engineering at UC Berkeley uh, and got my degree uh, 31 years ago. And 30 years ago, I took, uh, 32 years ago, I took a class uh, for the foundations of AI from yeah. uh, Stuart Russell, who is known as widely accepted as one of the fathers of AI. And what you studied back in those days actually hasn't changed. So if you look at what AI today is, it's a decision and framework that works on a knowledge graph. And computational graph theory is kind of the root of all this. So if anyone that's a computer scientist probably studied Dijkstra's, Dijkstra's algorithms and... and you know, Shannon's traverse. information theory. Exactly. There, there's a lot of these techniques that were actually published in the 60s. So I studied it in you know late 80s and 90s. And the books are there and the techniques right. are well known. So there's nothing preventing anybody that's a budding sort of a teenager to actually study the right type of math, right type of foundations to really truly understand what's actually possible with AI. Uh, it does take a rigor. <laughs> it's not easy. Those aren't the easiest classes in the world. However, what's different now versus then is the computers have gotten a billion times faster. The networks have gotten a billion times faster. And when you compound those effects, we're really now able to kind of process right. at near human speed. So these neural networks that were built, and what that enables, what that enables computer to do is, if you look at how you have corpus of knowledge here embedded and another corpus of knowledge there embedded, it used to be hard for a machine to take a leap forward and connect these two corpuses together. And now that's actually happening with AI. And so the, the, the rules-based engines that, that Amr talked about was very statistical in nature. And those were computations. Those rules-based systems could never think outside the box. Right. They were trapped, right? Yep. But they were got very good at it, like machine learning and yep. algorithms, predictive algorithms, and you know, doing like market trading or doing uh, advertising, etc. Spam et filtering, yeah, and exactly. fraud transaction. Yeah. Uh, All sorts handling. of great knowledge-based systems got to very high precision. But they could never actually take a leap forward and say, oh, what happens if I try this and make a mistake? So what AI is letting a computer do is make a lot of mistakes, make a lot of sh moon, you know, moonshot guesses and see what works and what doesn't. And when it works, it actually spans a very big chasm at machine speed. And this is what, what the foundations of Gen AI is all about. And it's applied to voice, it's, it's applied to video, it's, a, it's applied to languages. And we're just kind of scratching the surface of what this means. And so for people in other, you know, any economy or any kind of a marketplace or community, if you have the right corpus of data, and a lot of, it requires a lot of data to do this training and learning, um, you can actually, the AI will actually let you imagine what you can do with the data better than you can.